Hello, Internet! I'm Oi the Purpler Doofus, and welcome back to American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Today we're covering chapters 12 and 13. I hope you've read up to that point, because I don't want to ruin anything for you. Really, read up to that point. Finish chapter 13 before you watch this video. I don't want to spoil this for you. So chapter 12 begins with Shadow and Wednesday visiting a Native American reservation. And that's when I realized that I've been saying Indians when I really mean Native Americans. And I've done it a couple times on Twitter, and then after I realized what I've done, I felt awful about it. Whether or not it offends you, please let me know. <laughs> If it does or it doesn't, because it's like tearing me up inside when I accidentally called Native Americans Indians. And I feel awful about it, and there's no, really no excuse. I'm just, uh, sorry. As Wednesday and Shadow are driving through, they are blocked by agents. Town and... I can't remember the other guy's name. It's not really that important. But Wednesday takes Shadow along a backstage way. That's actually what he calls it. He calls it the backstage way. And as they're doing that, for some reason Shadow can see from the point of view of the agents. I'm not exactly sure why. Wednesday and Shadow get back from the backstage area and they find out that they have been gone for at least a month and a half, I believe. They come back on Valentine's Day itself and they meet two Native Americans, one named Whiskey Jack and the other one named Apple Johnny. Can you guess who Apple Johnny is supposed to be? Apple Johnny actually makes fun of Paul Bunyan for cutting down trees. It's kind of hilarious. Wednesday talks with these two Native Americans and asks them to join in his fight against the new gods. Both of them are kind of like, we're kinda new right now? We don't really want to fight against people that we know. If you get injured though and you come to us, we'll fix you. We'll help you if you get injured, but we don't really want to fight against either side. So these two Native Americans pretty much become Switzerland in this war. So then Wednesday goes to a pool hall and he meets Harry Blue Jay. And he basically threatens Harry Blue Jay to come to his side. And it's like we're, we're starting to see this really dark side to Wednesday, and I like it. Because it's starting to kind of define him more as a villain rather than a hero, and I like it. Wednesday takes Shadow back to Lakeside, and Shadow talks with Chad, the chief of police. Chad is really nervous because he's been talking with a distant cousin who he kind of likes. You know, like, like likes. And Shadow makes sure that they're not like, that they're not first cousins, and says, man, you should go for it. Chad's like, he <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Shadow goes on a few more trips with Wednesday, going to other gods that he can kind of rally onto his side for this war. And every time Wednesday comes out and he's more and more angry and frustrated at what he's doing. And he feels like giving up. Shadow gets a little downtime and he goes on a walk where he meets Laura again. And Laura is starting to decompose. And she's starting to look kind of like the best friend in American Werewolf. Just worse for wear. A completely talking, coherent zombie, almost. Then there is an interlude about a cold war between the, the new and the old gods, and how the new gods are starting to pick off the old gods slowly. And they're doing it quietly, where no one notices. And then they give us a scene where the kid in the limo from the beginning of the book, who snatched up Shadow that first time, he picks up a prostitute. And guess who this lovely prostitute is? It's the prostitute from chapter one. The one who sucked up the Johnny between her legs? Yeah, that one. And well, the boy in the limo kind of kills her. It's sad. There's a telephone conversation between Shadow's neighbor and the hitchhiker. Turns out that they are sisters. And the hitchhiker that he picked up is actually a lesbian. She asks the neighbor if she has the hots for Shadow. And the neighbor's like, why do you care? You don't like men. And the hitchhiker says, well, I did go on this hitchhike with this very interesting fellow. And the neighbor invites the hitchhiker over for dinner. And she says, only if you invite your interesting neighbor over so that I can see you two together. And then we get a glimpse into an interview in Florida where a nighttime position just opened up at a gas station and Laura is applying for it. This next chapter is the one where I'm saying, please read it before I ruin it for you. Trust me, you want to read chapter 13 before I ruin this for you. Go and read chapter 13 before I ruin this for you. Go and read it now. Turn off the video and read it. Read it. Are you gone? No, you're not. You're still here. I, I can see you watching. Turn it off now and read it. Fine, for those of you that did read it, let's move on. 
Wednesday is getting more and more frustrated with, you know, his plight to collect people on his side. And I'm just loving this side of him. I'm loving this evil side of him slowly coming out. Because when we first started out, Wednesday was just kind of like, eh, I'm kind of bad, but eh, eh, I'm lovable. I'm a lovable bad. And now he's just like pissed off and mainly mad. <laughs> it's just like, oh. Shadow gets invited to the dinner date with the next door neighbor, and he shows up and he's doing coin tricks for the little kid again. It's adorable. And while he's doing coin tricks for her, Crow shows up. And Crow's putting her jacket up and she turns around and she sees Shadow. She instantly recognizes him. But before she can say, hey, I know you, Shadow says, trying to stop her. And she doesn't actually out him. They have an awkward dinner, and Shadow says, I would love to take your sister out for a drink. And his neighbor tries to dissuade him from that because her sister only likes women. But Shadow insists, and so Shadow and Crow get into the car again, a very familiar sight. And might I just add that finally some characters had a home-cooked meal that wasn't in a diner? Way to go, guys! Shadow and Crow go to the bar, and on the way to the bar, Crow kind of turns to Shadow, and she says, Alright, so what's the deal? Are you like a serial killer? Are you really, really here to like, kill everyone in this small little town? Because I kind of like these people. Please don't kill them. Please don't kill me. Don't kill me. Most of all, please don't kill me. And Shadow calms her down and he actually tells her about gods and being a right-hand man to Odin, his dead wife coming back to life. She attempts to believe everything that he's saying because if she denies any of it, she's afraid that he'll kill her because he might be a serial killer. They get to the bar and they start having drinks and Shadow is waving to everyone at the bar because it's a small town and he knows everyone. And he sees Chad with his cousin. And his cousin is a redhead, but she has her back. The Shadow. And Shadow and Crow sit down at the bar to have a drink, and all of a sudden there's this blood-curdling scream, and everyone is staring at Shadow, and he's just kind of like, what's going on, guys? And it's the cousin. She turns around and she sees him, and she instantly starts yelling at him and calling him a murderer. Turns out that the cousin was actually the sister of his best friend, who his wife was blind when she got killed. And the two agents that were looking for the killer of the other two agents just who just happened to be Shadow's dead wife, had visited her and said, Are you aware that this man killed two of our best men? The instant that she saw him, she screamed, Murder! And, well, Chad had to arrest him. It's all very awkward, and Shadow gets sat down in front of a TV that's playing a rerun of Cheers, and the cast of Cheers starts talking to him. And I'm thinking, no, I love Cheers. Don't ruin Cheers for me. You're going to ruin Cheers for me. And the cast starts talking to him, and it's very, very creepy all over again. And I don't like Cheers anymore. I'm never going to see Sam in the same way. And the cast of Cheers says, hey, Shadow, we have something to show you. And they blink to a live feed of Wednesday and he is being recorded, and there is a laser dot on him, and it's slowly moving towards his face while he's talking to the new gods. The laser dot is connected to a sniper rifle, and they blow Wednesday's head off. They killed Odin! Seriously? And it pisses me off. <laughs> I'm just like, you are building up this great great moment because Odin was just getting more and more frustrated and angry and actually turning into this like evil character and then you kill him? Shadow gets picked up by two policemen. Turns out that the two policemen are actually Zernobog and Anansi and Shadow asks them if what he saw on TV actually happened and their silence speaks volumes. Then we have this small little story about a tribe in 14,000 BC, who are visited by one of their gods and told to go to a certain piece of land and prosper there. And they do, and they prosper, and they live for a very, 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 very long time. And that's the end of our section. The question that I have for you today is, has anything ever been spoiled for you? And don't say this video, because I warned you. I warned you twice. I warned you lots of times. Go and read it before I ruin it for you. I told you that, like, at least two or three times. So don't say this video. The question that I had yesterday was, what is your very favorite small town mystery? One that's kind of dear to my heart, mainly because I remember binge watching it with my mother. 
when I was little, is uh, Storm of the Century by Stephen King. Basically, you have this small town. It gets snowed in. People start getting killed, and at their death sites, there's a sign that says, Give me what I want, and I'll go away. So not only do they have to figure out who is killing these people, but they also have to figure out what he wants. It's very interesting. If you haven't seen it, it's great. And I know I said it's by Stephen King. He wrote the screenplay, but there was no actual book version of it. It's... It's fantastic. Do not forget that the next book that I'll be reading is The Indisputable Proof of Santa Claus by Dr. Anna Fry. I still don't have it in my hands at the time of this recording, but by the time you're seeing this video, I'm sure that I will. Go out and get it by any legal means necessary. Borrow it from the library, borrow it from a friend, buy it at a bookstore, buy it on a Kindle. I don't care what you do as long as it's legal and you read it before I ruin it for you. I've been Elliot the Purple Air is reminding you to watch your pajama radius, and I will see you all in the next chapters of American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Toodles!